Parallax mapping is a shading method that's used by a lot of top and game engines in the industry today. And Unity 3 has the ability to do parallax bump mapping. So let me show you how it works. Okay. We have this street here that has right now a bump specular shader, which actually looks pretty decent. But we can actually improve the look of this and make it look like it's quote unquote popping out a little bit more toward the player. Okay. So just look at how it looks now. I'm going to go over to Bump Specular and I'm going to go to Parallax. And I have two Parallax shaders from the default library that I can use a Parallax Diffuse and a Parallax Specular. So let me use the Parallax Specular real quick. I'll select that. It looks like the floor dropped down a few inches, so to speak. Okay. The way this works is pretty simple. We still have the main color, specular color, the shininess. We've got uh, the base RGB with the gloss alpha map. We've got the normal map as well. But now we have this new slot called height map. And there's a little A in parentheses telling us uh, alpha. Okay. So the way that the parallax shader works is it makes objects kind of protrude and stick out. It's excellent for doing things like bricks, um, stone floors, things like that. Uh, it'll be perfect for this kind of parking lot, uh, broken up street floor. Okay. And what we need is a height map to tell Unity uh, how to, you know, protrude and, and apply the parallax bump mapping effect. So I'm going to open up the asset browser. I'm going to go back to the parking lot area. Now with parking lot, we've got a parking lot bump, parking lot diffuse, and a parking lot height map that I've created. Okay. So I'll select the height map. And you notice there's something really weird happened right here with the shader. It looks very strange. Okay. The way this works is pretty simple. If I go to the height map shader over here, or the height map texture, you can see that I have this height map that I've created in a 2D image editing program. And the way it works is pretty simple. Areas that are white are areas that stick up out of the ground. Areas that are darker, like black and really dark gray, are areas that are kind of protruded and they're lower uh, in terms of elevation, okay, in terms of height. And you have to have an alpha uh, applied to this. So basically what I did was I just applied the same map to the alpha, okay. So let me select the object again. And you can control the amount of the effect with this new height parameter that we have up here. It has a slider. So if I crank it all the way up to the right, you notice that my floor pretty much uh, gets destroyed. It looks really weird. Okay. Parallax bump mapping is an optical illusion. Your object actually is not, it doesn't have all this detail. It's an illusion created by maps and the parallax bump mapping effect. So if you increase the effect all the way up, you're going to get yourself all these strange artifacts and it's going to look really weird. It looks almost like the floor melted. So what I like to do is I like to push it all the way to the left because that gives me nice subtle results. So that takes care of the parallax shader right there. So now what I'm going to do is start applying tex uh, textures and stuff to everything else. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this light here. I'm going to hit control and D, D for duplicate. And you can also go up here to edit and you can hit duplicate. You can see the shortcuts control D. I like using shortcuts because it uh, makes my workflow a lot faster. So I'll duplicate this light and maybe place it over here. I'll make another duplicate. And basically I'm creating these lights so that I can see what's going on in my scene. As I apply these lights I can see more and more of my environment and that helps me to apply my shaders a little bit more accurately and better. Okay, This is not the final lighting of the scene however. So let me just start taking some of these objects, like say this wall back here, and uh, I'm going to apply a texture for that. And you can see the name is Exterior Street Gate Wall Original. So I'm going to look for Exterior Street Gate Wall. Actually, it's going to be Gate Wall A. Okay. So I'll double click that. There's my uh, diffuse texture right there. Okay. But I don't want a diffuse texture for that. I'm going to go with a bump specular. You see the specularity doesn't look very good, so I need to go to the texture and tell Unity to generate an alpha from grayscale. I'll hit apply, and now you'll see the specularity improve. There it goes, much better. So I'll select the object, go to normal map. I'll look for the normal map, which is going to be exterior street gate wall A bump. Double click on that, and there we go. I'll hit fix now to fix up the normal map, and there we go. There's the uh, there's normal map. If I bring this over here, you can see the way that it looks. 
As I move this light across, you can see the nice normal mapping right there. The detail starts to pop out. So I'm going to go to this gate over here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to apply texture. That's going to be uh, exterior street gate door. So I'll look for exterior street gate door and one quick way of finding stuff is you can use the search field up here which is pretty useful if I'm looking for something that has the word gate in it or gate door or something like that I can just type in gate and unity will narrow down anything that has that word in the name so when I finish typing the word gate it shows me these textures here now I know I'm not working with the gate wall I'm working with the gate door so I'll apply the diffuse here okay let me get another light over here so that I can actually see there's the gate door now there's something wrong with my door at the moment um, you can see the texture looks kind of funny I, I immediately can tell that something is seriously wrong if I look at the texture this is the way that the texture is supposed to look okay in this little preview that looks nothing like what my gate door over here looks like so what is happening well it looks like the UVs are messed up so we're gonna have to do a UV swap and this is something I spoke about in an earlier video when we were importing the FBX files. So I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, uh, This object belongs in the props exterior category over here, or, or asset. And it's blue right now because it's a prefab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my meshes. I'm going to look for props exterior, which is this one right here, props EXT. And remember this option, the swap UVs option? I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to hit apply. And that should fix up my texture. There we go. See that the uh, the texture on the on the gate door over here is applied correctly. This is the way it's supposed to look. So I'll go to this one, and uh, what I want to do is I want to apply bump specular because that's going to look good. We're going to be working with the bump specular shader a lot. Okay. So you can see the way it looks right now. It doesn't look too great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the texture here. The texture is going to pop up here in the project. I can see the bumps right here, so I can just click and drag the bump and drop it on top of the normal uh, normal map slot right there. It's just a way of working a little bit faster sometimes. You can see the bump mapping right there, kind of that rusted metal. It's kind of sticking out right there. It looks really cool. Uh, what I want to do is go to the texture, however, and apply an uh, alpha from grayscale. So I'll generate an alpha map right there in Unity. Much faster than going back to Photoshop and creating it there. You can see the great difference it made right there. Okay, and if I look at this, it looks fantastic. Very detailed, very nice. The specular mapping looks fantastic. Great. Let's talk about transparent shaders now. If I go to this dirt mound over here, okay, it's just kind of like a mound of dirt and trash, uh, a debris pile basically. What I want to do is let me first go ahead and find the texture for this. So I'll go to the search field, and I know I'm looking for something with the word debris, because that's in the name. Uh, so debris pile, so I can see the name debris pile B is what I'm looking for. So I'll select the debris pile B. And I want to use a bump map for this, so I'll go with bump diffuse. And I'll grab the bump map over here, drop it on there. Okay, so now I have this nice normal map on there. But uh, you can see here that it looks kind of bad. See the way that the the sort of the dirt meets with the concrete with the floor it looks weird it looks almost like this is a hat uh, on top of a table it doesn't look good so what we can do is we can use uh, alphas and transparency to make stuff look even better so I'm gonna take the dirt mound I'm gonna tell it to fix the normal map I'm gonna go over here to my transparent shader family okay and I have different transparent shaders I can use let me just use the transparent bump diffuse shader okay and basically if I come in here, you can see that now I have this really cool transparency running along the edge of this, which makes it kind of blend in. And if I go to the texture, you can see the texture has this alpha map on it. So basically, uh, you could see it fades out at the edges, and that's what gives it that nice soft look, like the dirt uh, becomes less and less until then you see the floor, the concrete. Now up here for this, uh, this object up here, what I'm going to use is a sort of a, a wood shader here gonna go over here I have a texture for this and I'm gonna look for fence here it is here's the the fuse and basically we have this wooden fence that goes up here on this wall but you can see it looks kind of funny that's because we need an alpha map for this so I'm gonna to go to transparent and instead I'm gonna use a cutout shader okay 
And I'm going to go to the bump specular. You can see the edges are cut out really nice, the way it's supposed to look, okay? Based on the alpha map. And if I go to the texture, I can show you the alpha map that it has. You can see right there, uh, it's a nice, clean alpha map. Let me go back to the object. We're going to need to get its normal map. So I'm going to look for fence, uh, wood bump. That's the one I want. Fix the normal map by hitting the Fix Now button. It's done. You can see the normal map right there. Specularity, the, the specularity is a little bit harsh right now. So I can control that by coming up here to the specular color. Okay. And dropping that. If it's black, you won't have any specularity. If it's a little bit gray, you have a little bit of specularity, which is what I want. And you can even add some color to the specularity if you want to. So you have this really cool wooden fence looking uh, asset that's just made up from a flat polygon with a really good uh, texture and bump map. So at this point, the process becomes very, very repetitive. Once you understand it once or twice, should be no problem to do this for the rest of these objects out here. So I'm going to take this wall, for example, right here. It's called Exterior Street Wall A. I'm going to go to Select. I'm going to search for Exterior Street Wall. And here it is. Here's the views. You can see that the UVs look like they're messed up. If the UVs are messed up, not a problem. I'll have to go to the exterior buildings um, and swap the UVs. So I'm going to go to exterior buildings over here. Hit swap UVs. Hit apply. It'll re-import the correct UVs. There we go. I want this to be a bump specular shader. So I'm going to go grab the bump. Drop it on there. Fix it. There we go. I'm going to go to the fuse texture. I'm going to go to generate alpha from grayscale. Hit apply. There we go. Really good. Now that looks pretty awesome. That wall looks pretty cool. Okay. So I'm going to do the rest of that for these trash bags and for these dumpsters. And that'll be it. And then I'll end the video. So I'll do this very quickly. Okay, so that's pretty much done. I'm going to end this video here, and in the next one, we'll just continue applying materials to our scene and moving along here.